Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Happy Thursday. How are we Hello, doing? Let's, everyone. let's get these cameras on if we can. Mats, I finally heard from the car dealership that the part came in. Should be oh, able to pick up my car very soon. That's great news. I know. My car has been in the shop for over two months. Just waiting on parts. So very excited for that. Guys, give me some love in the chat. Say hello. Where are you from? Love seeing all your beautiful faces. You got to switch switch over to a German car now. <laughs> 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 What's going on? How's it going, MJ? Doing good? Yeah, doing good. How are you guys? Great. Doing, doing great, good. sir. Looking awesome, sir. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. You were the first person to ever say that to me. Thank you. <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Always great. Cool. I'm All excited right. we about this uh, 15 minute webinar we're going to do. It's going to be jam packed in that 15 minute. Actually, it's Chris Rodriguez. So it's going at least 45 minutes to an hour. We're going to be here for an hour, guys. 12 to 1 Eastern. And uh, thank you for showing up. We had a bunch of people register, like 190 people register. Usually, you typically see around a 50% show rate once everybody gets in. Uh, we have a lot to cover, so I want to dive right in. And this webinar is called the Focus for Better Grades Workshop. So just so we can kind of assess um, who's in the room, if you have done a community event, mass intro, mass enrollment, lots of different terminology for it, if you've done one of those before, give me a yes or a no in the chat and get your fingers ready because that's what we do on these webinars. We get some engagement. All right. Yes, poorly. Well, hopefully not after today. Okay. We got a handful of no's in here. Keep them coming. Have you done a community event, mass enrollment, mass intro in the past? Let us know. No first one tomorrow evening. Well, great timing, Ms. Smith. Awesome. Okay, second question. What's the largest attendance number for those of you that have done them, right? What is the largest attendance number that you've had? Is it 20 people showed up, 25, 50? How many? Ms. Chapman says 20. First one yesterday, meet the teacher. 8, 12, 10-ish, 15, 30. Awesome. Keep them coming, guys. If you've ran these community events before, What's the largest attendance number? 25 in an individual class. Great number right there. 40 to 50, two rooms. 27 appointments for this Saturday. Awesome. We got a lot of people that have some mass intros coming up this weekend. I know in Orlando, they just went back to school today, right? Kids first they day did. today? Yes, they did. Yeah. Mass intros tomorrow and Saturday. Awesome. Same for us. Very cool. Okay. Last question. And then, and then we're going to dive into the content here. What's the, for those of you that have done these before that have had people show up, what's the largest number of signups that you've gotten in that one hour time period? So number of enrollments stacking the deck for this Saturday. Awesome. Five, three, nine, two, three, eight, 15. Wow. Very cool. Three. Mets, do you know the largest number of enrollments from one of your CMA schools, if you had to say, from one uh, community event? Uh, 49 uh, is the number that I remember, but I think we broke that record, didn't we? Did we break 49 students in one day? We think so, but 49 is a for sure. So 49 enrollments on one year agreements in one Saturday. Show of hands. How many, how many would be happy with that? Maybe a little nervous? 49 brand new students coming in, right? Where are we going to put them? Cool. All right, guys, let's go ahead and dive in. Thank you so much for 
uh, showing up. If you have the ability to turn your cameras on, please do so. If you're driving or you're naked. You oh, and real quick, off. Chris, Mr. Yeah. Tony Lewis once did 50 in two sessions, but most times five to 15. Mr. Lewis, what do you mean 50? I just want to clarify before we move on. 50 enrollments or 50 people signed, were attended? I'm just curious for everybody. Back in um, 2015 or something like that, I think it's the first time I did one. Uh, it was uh, like, I, I guess it's been a while back, but I think it's 50 enrollments that, that month. 50 and enrollments. I think, it was, I think in, uh, it was like 40 in, uh, it was like 50 that month, but I think it was like 40 in two. Uh, two uh, Mass intros? Yes. Phenomenal. 40 students. Everybody would but love that. It, that was one time. <laughs> That's okay. Great All job, right. sir. You, sir. I'm going to try and repeat uh, it. <laughs> All we right. Will. Well, ho yeah, hopefully with what we go over today, you will have the formula. So thanks so much, guys, for getting in the chat box. Uh, last month, Mr. Metzger and I, it was July 10th, so literally a month ago to the date, we did this webinar called The Three Systems for Back to School. And in that particular webinar, this is where we broke down how you get people to your community event, okay? A lot of questions, typically when we cover how to get people to your community event, uh, start rolling in and how do you actually run it, right? And a lot of times the kind of small little details school owners will get hung up on, so they just end up choosing not to do it, okay? Now, if you have not watched the three systems for back to school that we did a month ago, I'm gonna drop the replay link here. It's an unlisted video on YouTube. So that was like session one, and this is session two, because we got a ton of questions of, okay, I get it, I know what I gotta do, I gotta set up the booth, I gotta get people to the community event, but how do I run it? And often we get hung up on those details, so we just choose not to do it, okay? So over the next 45 minutes, we're going to give you the exact step-by-step -step framework to confidently host and crush your Focus for Better Grades workshop this back-to-school season. We're going to be going over four items. Number one, what exactly is a community event, mass intro, mass enrollment, lots of different terms for it. What are some of the most popular themes that you could be doing? The logistics, like what's the best day and the time? And then we're going to go through the four parts of a successful community event. You are going to need pen and paper for this because we're going to draw out the framework. And what's so great is that once you understand the framework of what this workshop looks like, you can then plug and play the different themes. Okay, so... Let's kind of just start with what is a community event? Like, what is the objective? It's to scoop up a large quantity of enrollments in your school in one hour or less. Mets, can you just kind of talk about the different kind of language that you sometimes hear in our industry in terms of like mass intro versus mass enrollment versus community event? Yeah, well, internally with yourself and your staff or just internally, what we are doing is we're doing a mass introductory lesson right but it is a mass enrollment it's 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 enrolling more it's enrolling a group of people at one time however when we market it out to the community or to the people we use the term free community event and when you use the word community specifically it sounds like to the clientele that you are you are just hosting a free community event which we put a theme to which we'll talk about here shortly but we market it as a free community event to get more people to participate. Perfect. Thank you for the explanation. And as he was saying, there are different themes that you can do. Um, so some of the kind of the more popular themes, and, and this isn't, you know, just the only ones you can do, but focus for better grades and certain themes are going to work during certain seasons better than others, right? We've got the children's success seminar, goal setting through board breaking, stranger danger, bully proof. Matt, any other kind of themes that you think we should highlight here? These are kind of the most popular ones. Yeah. So especially if you work with adults, a mass enrollment or a mass intro could be a free self-defense seminar, right? 
Um, it could be a summer safety seminar if you're working with kids and we're going into summer. Here, I'll, just, I'll just give you this concept real quick, everybody. If you were to go out in the community and hold a sign that says, who wants to do martial arts lessons? You're gonna get a sliver of a sliver of your population. But if you go out to a bunch of parents and you say, who would like to bully proof their child for the new school year? Every parent's interested in that. Who would want to see their child have more focus? Who would want their child to learn how to set goals for the new school year? So that's how we theme it. And we theme those themes again, by saying we are hosting a free community event for all the kids in the community on Bully Buster or on Stranger Danger or on Focus for better grades or whatever it is. So just understand the concept. But if you work with adults, well, what are adults interested in? If you're working with corporations, a free team building and self-defense seminar, right? A free fitness and self-defense seminar, right? A, a free team building community workshop for all adults at XYZ elementary school or high school. Don't get caught up in, in the specifics here. Just understand what the concept is. Perfect. Thank you. And, you know, another thing people kind of get hung up on sometimes is, okay, I want to run it, but I need a graphic. I need a poster. So I just kind of wanted to give a quick shout out to Maya Edge because all of these different community event themes we have accessible inside of the portal. So you got the focus for better grades, goal setting through board breaking, children's success seminar. There's adult ones as well. So uh, if you're struggling with kind of creating the assets for you to put online, to send out to your emails, to put in your ads, there is a great resource with, with Maya Edge. Next, can we talk a little bit and we, you know, if they want to know how to get people to the event, we're going to have them watch that replay. So I don't want to spend too much time on that. But can you talk about the logistics in terms of like best dates, times, and the length of the event? Yes. Yeah, so for whatever reason, don't try to think because nothing more is logical in business necessarily. We found the best days or dates, forget the dates, the best days to do this is a Saturday for whatever reason, Saturday morning. The best times is 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. Now, I know some of you have said, well, we have classes then. Then you have to do it after your last class ends, right? Or you cancel. But like right now, we cancel all classes. There are certain times of the year, dates, like right now, back to school, we cancel all classes. E everything is focused on the back to school time and doing this mass enrollment. The length of the event is we try to keep people not longer than an hour and you need to market it that way as well when you talk to people we're not going to keep you longer than an hour because people don't want to think they're going to spend their entire saturday with you so we try to keep it to an hour the other thing that i'm going to tell you is when you do these events and you make passes my recommendation would be to make a thousand passes that just say this saturday at 11 a.m as an example do not put the date because if you have the date like this Saturday, August blank at 11 a.m., when that ends, you got to throw all your excess passes away. They're down garbage. So just put this Saturday. Now, why? Because we will never promote a mass enrollment more than a week out anyway. Never. So it'll always be this Saturday at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. So that's another piece of advice as far as logistics go. Awesome. All right, guys. So we've, we've set the tone here. Let's now go into the actual event, right? It's like it's the day of, you have people in your school, um, and there are four parts to this, okay? So this is where you're going to need uh, something to draw with uh, because we are going to create this framework for you, okay? And man, we still got people rolling in. This is awesome. Okay, okay. Um, so I'm going to basically be doing the drawing and Mr. Metzger is going to be doing the talking. Does that sound good, Metz? As long as you can draw well and I know what I'm looking at, it sounds great. All right. So guys, on your, uh, on your sheet of paper, I want you at the top, just put focus for better grades. And then what we're going to do is we are going to draw just a little rectangle here and then Put it in fourths just like that. All right. So go ahead and get this done because everything that we're going over is going to be fitting inside of this. And again, this framework can be used for any of the different themes. Okay. So there are four different parts 
to this. So we're going to number them. One, two, three, and four. And we're going to kick it off with the first part of hosting this community event, which we call pre-class. So go ahead and write in pre-class. And there are four different steps to the pre-class. If you've ever worked with Maya, you've ever worked with Mr. Metzger, he loves the number four. So you're going to see a lot of fours coming through here. All right. So go ahead, draw that out. And the very first step, once you are ready to rock and roll, and Mets, I don't know if you want to maybe, you know, pre preset the, the uh, where we're at here, but the first thing we got to do is we got to do introductions. So you want to go ahead? Yep. yep. And, and so very quickly, I'm going to hit these just quick though. Does the hour include the needed time to enroll them? Yes. I mean, you may go a little longer than an hour, but yes. Is Mets going to draw for you in future events? No, I don't think so. I, that's why Chris and I make a great team. All right. right. So here we go. So listen, prior to this introduction, listen up closely. Here's a detail. Whoever is going to do this pre-class, these four steps, whoever's going to do this, what I'm going to talk about in one minute, that person needs to be the person that is greeting everybody at the front door as people are walking in. Okay. Whoever's going to do the pre-class, four steps, is the person that will be greeting every parent and child as they walk in, handing the parents a clipboard to fill out the guest registration as the kids go off with an assistant instructor over onto the mat. Parents will sit down, and this person also that does the pre-class is going to be talking with the parents, holding the door for new people coming in, and building rapport with the parents the entire time until we get to step one on the pre-class. Step one on the pre-class is introduce yourself and the school, okay? Step one, introduce yourself and the school. So basically, it's this simple. Of course, you thank them. You put it in context. You say, okay, parents, first of all, thank you so much for joining us on this Saturday. I know everybody's busy and, and schedules are crazy, but I just want to take a second to thank you guys for attending. My name is Mr. Metzger. And I'm one of the instructors here at Championship Martial Arts. And I want to welcome you all. There's an example of how I introduced myself and the school. Okay. Step two, introduce your help. Right. Now, I would say introduce your team, introduce your staff. But some of you may not have staff or a team. You might have your sister or brother come in and your husband or your wife coming in to help you. So introduce your help. So you would say, you know, helping me with the event today is sensei so-and-so or Mr. So-and-so or Miss so-and-so. Now this is extremely important. This is a detail. And if you skip these details, then you're going to wonder why you don't get the results, right? When you introduce your team, you would need to say, so this is, you know, Miss Stephanie Connor, everybody say, Hello, Miss Stephanie Connor. And, and, the, and the parents will kind of mumble. They, they won't say anything. And then you must say, parents, we got to set an example for your kids here. Let's give some energy. We have Miss Stephanie that's going to be helping and work with your child. Say, hi, Miss Stephanie. And then you get them to say, hi, Miss Stephanie. Now, all you are doing right now is you're getting them to loosen up a little bit, kind of like this group. When I make jokes and all of you don't even crack a smile because you're so serious. I would fail miserably right now if I wanted to do a mass enrollment with you folks. I would have to up my game a little bit more. I'd have to call Chris in to help me with some jokes or something. But you got to get them to loosen up. That is why you introduce your team and get them to say hello. Step three, pay attention. This is the biggest thing, okay? Uh, are the parents in the same room? Yes, they are. absolutely are. And that's a whole different seminar. Parents should always be in the same room. You should have a parent seating area, but not on your mats, but a seating area right off the mats. And, and there's, I know there's logic on both sides. I can explain it because I've done it all and I've consulted. But yes, they are in the room. They are in the room. Step three, big deal. Pre-frame, a sales talk will occur. Pre-frame, a sales talk will occur. If you do not do this, you will fail miserably, okay? You need to pre-frame to these people that you are going to pitch them. The secret sauce is 
How do you do that? And here's how you do that. Parents, once again, I wanna thank you coming to our free community event. I know a lot of you when I talk to you on the phone to reserve your spot and to find out how many people will be attending so we can order pizza, a lot of you were asking, um, well, what if my child likes it? How much are your classes? How, what's the deal? And I didn't wanna put you off on the phone because I really did wanna focus on the free community event, but because so many of you were asking about how you can enroll your child and information, if it's okay with you, at the end of our free event, I will let everybody know, for those of you who are interested, what the special is, if anybody did wanna continue with us, and I'd love to see all your children continue, but because I can't put a face to the voice from the phone, if it's okay with everyone, I'll just let everybody know what the special is. Is that fair, everybody? And you gotta end with that question. Is that fair, everybody? And they will nod their head yes. They just gave you permission to give them a sales talk at the end of this event. So now nobody's gonna be upset. Nobody's gonna feel like they were baited and switched at the end of the event. You got permission, okay? And step four, rules. You gotta go over the rules. And this again is extremely important because when we go over the rules, uh, this is what's going to separate you in the parents' minds from any other activity their child has done. So you would say, parents, before we begin, there's just a couple rules. Number one, if you have any cell phones, we want you to put it on vibrate or put it on silent because we really want all the focus on your, on your child today. Number two, if you have any small children that are getting antsy and, and they need to walk around, please feel free, get up, walk around a little bit. If you need to step outside for just a second, do that, but please make sure you come back in because I will need you uh, at the end of the class. You will be participating just at the end with your child. And the most important rule, parents, the most important rule, now this is what separates you. The most important rule is, once you walk through those doors, you've walked into a positive reinforcement facility. What that means is when your child does something out here in class, even if they make a mistake, if they trip or fall, the first person they're gonna look at is you. Not, not me as the instructor, you. When they do, we don't want parents saying, stand up, what are you doing, pay attention. We don't want that. We wanna let them know how great they're doing. We wanna give them a wink, a nod, a smile, an A-OK. -okay. Tell them they are doing fantastic. We are here to build your children up and make them feel unstoppable. Is that pretty easy, parents? You think we can follow those rules? Parents, you think we can follow those rules? Again, I'm loosening them up. And then what I do is I say, okay, well, let's start the class. Let's give a big round of applause and a lot of energy for your children. Boom. And that's the opening. That's the pre-class. Awesome. I'd love to get some feedback in the chat, guys. Oftentimes, it's not what's taught. It's what's caught. So let me know, what was your biggest takeaway from the pre-class uh, aspect of the Focus for Better Grades? Go ahead and go in the chat. Let us know, what was the biggest takeaway so far? Mr. Sebastian, pre-sale part of it, pre-frame the sale. Awesome. Keep them coming, guys. This lets us know and gives us a, a feedback loop here. Enthusiasm, genuineness, pre-frame, giving the parents rules sales and rules, getting the parents involved and engaged, setting the tone, uh, the why of the phones on silent. Very cool. Person at the door should be the person doing the introduction. I thought that was a great takeaway as well. Rules, parent interaction. Awesome. Very cool. Matt, anything else you want to say on pre-class before we go to step two? Yes, I do. I appreciate the engagement and the biggest takeaway, but I want to be crystal clear with you because I'm not going to bait and switch you guys. If you skip one of these and you don't present one of the four the way I told you to present these, I cannot guarantee you results. Now that sounds negative maybe, pessimistic, but on the other hand, let me tell you how confident I am at this and how, how once you understand this, the results are, are, are predictable. My school, one of my schools asked me, and it's on video, you can go watch it on my head. It's, I, one of my schools asked me, Hey, you said if we ever needed help running a mass intro, you'd come and do it. I said, when is it? Friday, seven o'clock, right? Because we were already booked Saturday. The next best time is Friday at seven for whatever reason. So I went Friday at seven. I went home. This is before the great phones. I grabbed a video camera. I walked in and I said, I want you to film this because I'm, we're going to put it on the website as a training tool. 
I would not do that, guys, if I didn't know the results I was going to get, right? Went in, 18 people showed up. We signed up 13 of 18 on one-year programs, 13 of 18 enrolled. One more example, just to show you. I was doing a seminar in this conference room, this conference room right here, okay? Thank you, Perry. And I had a group of about 12 people and they came in for a success seminar. And this is going back probably eight years ago. And I found out that one of my schools on the next day, Saturday morning at 11, was doing a mass intro. Just on, the, on a whim, I said, you, you know what? This is back when I even had after school. This had to be 10 years ago. We had a van. I said, you know what we're going to do tomorrow? I'm going to put all of you in a van. I'm going to drive you over to that school. And I'm going to let you guys watch me do a mass intro. We had 23 people showed up. I, showed, I signed up 20 people because I went into the school. I said, hey, I'll do your mass intro. 20 people. Now, why would I take a whole group of people if I didn't understand that how predictable the results are? My point here is do not skip any of these points. You need to practice these. So when you do it, you think you did these points. You can't just be good at it. You must practice. Okay. But once you have it, you have it forever. And as a matter of fact, one of those people at this success seminar said, can we pay you $5,000 in your airfare? We want to fly you out to our school and do and, and have you do the mass intro. I said, no, you just learned how to do it. You can do it. They said, we want you to do it. I kept saying, I don't like to travel. They said, I want you to do it. They've been clients of mine for a while. I flew out. They did a mass intro and I did one for them on Friday and a Saturday. Predictable results. Get the signups. I mean, so just make sure you practice these points. Sorry, Chris, a little long winded. No, that was great, sir. Thank you. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and go into step number two, which is teach. All right. So go ahead, write teach in here. And we're actually going to break this section up into two here. All right. So the, the first aspect of the teaching portion, right? We did the pre-sale. We're now on to teaching. It's got to be what, Mets? You have to teach a fun and high energy class. Now, listen, everybody, you still have to keep in the spirit of what you do. So a fun and high energy class is not give them dodgeballs and start playing dodgeball. That, that's, not, that's not what we do. But you need to make sure the class is fun and high energy. Awesome. And, and way, go ahead, Chris. So, so I may get ahead of this unless you want to put the, the points out, Chris, but yes. fun and high energy is this, everybody. Listen, you need to have music playing. When they're doing the drill, get some music playing. Music creates emotion and energy, okay? Number two, you do not line them up in rows. You line them up in lines. Have them do line drills, or partner drills, line drills or partner drills. Now, that I, I would imagine that everyone on this webinar does a portion of their class where you have a partner or you're doing a line drill. So I believe that's in the spirit. But what you don't want to do is put, put them on in rows and start doing stretches and high blocks, you know what I mean, or wrist rolls and stuff like, we don't have time for that. This is, this is a community event where we're, we're, get, we're talking about a theme, which is number four, right? But using martial arts to get the kids engaged in that theme. We're using martial arts. So how do I do that? The actual class may be about 40 minutes, okay? 35 to 40 minutes. And ultimately we have a, a goal in the class. You know, our goal guys today or our focus today is to be able to break this board or to be able to hit this target with power or to be able to do a forward roll or to be able to do that arm lock, whatever it is, right? But what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about the theme. Guys, who can tell me what a goal is? If I'm talking about goal setting, who can tell me what a bully is? What's a bully? What do you do if you see a bully? You know, tell me what are some ways you could be bull? I'm going to spend about two minutes or you're gonna lose them guys. If you start doing a lecture or a seminar, you're gonna lose the kids. So I'm gonna spend about two minutes talking about the theme and then I'm gonna go into the drill. All right, guys, let's go into the drill. Now our focus here is we wanna run down, hit this target three times, or we wanna shrimp down the room. Again, 
however it is, right? Do the drill, music's playing, and they're doing that drill for about a minute and a half, two minutes, three minutes, depending on how many you have. Here's the thing. The focus theme, you see where it says, focus your body, your eyes, your ears, your brain. Certain ways we do that is we'll say to these kids, when I say stop, the last child's going to do their drill. You're going to get back in your lines. You are going to stay straight as an arrow. Your eyes are going to be on me. And the line that is the straightest won't have to do five push-ups. So when you say stop and the music stops, what the parents will see are the kids rushing back, standing perfectly straight, trying to stay in a straight line, looking straight ahead. And this is where I will engage the parents throughout the class. I'll say, wow, parents, did you realize you guys just happen to have the most focused children in Orlando, Florida? That's amazing. And the parents will kind of laugh and I'll say, is this how they focus and listen at home? Wow, this is amazing, guys. It's just getting the parents involved, but this is what we do with the kids, right? So we got to get them to focus, but we got to make sure there's fun. Now, once I stop the drill, spend another two minutes on the theme. And then we'll go into the next drill. And then I'll spend two minutes on the theme. Then we'll go into the next drill. Go ahead, Chris. No, that was it, Mets. I mean, that's number two. That is teach. So you got fun and high energy. You want to make sure we're playing music. Got to work the theme in some type of partner lines. You know, even as a jujitsu school, we still incorporate striking into our uh, themes just because it's very, very high energy. Okay. So I'd love to know guys again in the, in the comments, what was the biggest takeaway about part two of hosting the community event, which is just teaching the class, right? This is like, this is the fun stuff. This is, this is what we do. Right. So let me know what was the biggest takeaway. It's structured. Absolutely. And, you know, like Mr. Metzger said, this is something you guys got to practice. You got to role play with your team. Engagement right. with the parents. Brian, Brian, you said it. Engagement with the parents. It's what is what's going to help you get the enrollments. When you constantly engage the parents on the breaks, look at how focused your children are. You want them seeing things that they're not used to seeing. OK. I love it. And Matt's, you know, one of the things that uh, was a major takeaway from for me, because I've fallen into the trap of lecturing, especially on like the stranger danger or summer safety, because there's a lot of statistics you can start spitting out. That's not what you guys want to do. Keep it short. Keep it sweet. Work the theme in. And we gave you an example specific for the focus for better grades. But Mr. Metzger also unpacked some of the bully stuff and some of the goal setting stuff. Uh, Miss Yates says, never use music in classes. How do you decide what type of music to use? We use old school rap, NWA, uh, Tupac, Tupac, Biggie. Yeah, any of those is really high energy. I'm kidding, everybody. Death metal, we've had death, but no. Listen, Chris, I mean, we use obviously <laughs> two live crew. Exactly, you know, <laughs> all the old stuff. <laughs> Guys, don't overthink it. We want it. We not. We don't want vulgarity. We don't use pop. You know, depending on the age of the kids, you could use kids bop music if they're kindergarten, first graders. But just keep it fun. Keep it fun. You know, a lot of great instrumental channels out there as well, guys, that you could be using. Okay, cool. Here we go. Step number three. Step number three. Let me just go ahead and share real quick. Boom. Boom. Mets, do you like the, the drawing thing? Like, give me some. I feedback. really do. It's super it's not, cool. It's pretty cool, right? All it right, is. guys. So we pre we we did the pre-class, we went ahead and taught, and now it is post class. All right. So four steps in post class. First one is huddle. What does that mean, Mets? So listen, as soon as the class ends, now now let me let me just go back, Chris. Let me just fill in a blank here. I don't wanna, I don't wanna cheat the folks here. So at the end, we do have kids break a board at the very end. And this is where we will call the parents up. And typically we will call parents up five at a time. What we'll do is we'll have the kids sit in their lines. The first, let's say I had 25 kids in the class the, and I have five lines of five. Okay. The first five in the line will stand up, come up front. I'll say, okay, I need all the parents of these children. Come on out to the front. Here's a board and we'll whisper to the parents, listen, be careful. The boards are real easy. This is not about power. It's about boosting their confidence and making them feel good about themselves. And I'm going to count to three and I'll say, kids, 
You're going to stand in front of your parents. You could do an elbow strike, a knee strike, a front kick, a side kick, a hammer fist. I don't care what you do with the MMA schools. We would do an elbow, a downward elbow strike, um, but it doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do. And if you don't want to break a board, that's fine. Why, why a board? I want you to understand the concept because we know a board is exciting. We know a board creates emotion. We know children like to break things. That's why we use a board. If you have something else you want to use to create excitement and emotion, do it, right? If you have disposable lamps you could buy at Five Below, have them smash lamps to the floor or something. You know, that, that's exciting for kids. But here's the deal. You have the parents hold it, you'll say one, two, three, and then have them break their board. Tell them to give their parents a hug and a high five, grab their boards, go to the back of their line and sit still and put their boards on the mat and do not touch the boards, okay? Next five will come up, we'll do that. Now all the kids broke their boards. So now what we'll do is we're gonna dismiss, but we're gonna have an instructor or my helper take all the kids with their boards to the far end of the mat or away from the parents in a huddle. They're gonna get in a big circle, the furthest part away from the parents, okay? In that huddle, the instructor will sign their boards, okay, sign their boards, and also ask them what they liked about the class, how did they, did they have fun, what was their favorite part of the class. That instructor is, is going to keep those kids occupied until they get my cue. Me, who, who's my, who am I? I'm the guy who greeted everyone at the door and did that opening, that pre-class. Whoever did that is the same person that's going to do this post-class talk, okay? Same person, okay? Now, one of the things that we'll do in the huddle is the instructor will say, how many of you had fun today? Did you guys have fun? How many of you wanna come back and do more karate with us or martial arts with us? We'll listen and then we'll say, well, listen, if you guys wanna do martial arts, make sure you tell your mom and dad you wanna sign up for karate or for martial arts. Now, is that sneaky? Is that, I, I don't know. I'm not telling them to tell their parents, even if they didn't like it, make sure you tell your parents, you've got to sign up. I'm just saying, if you liked it, why do we say that? Here's why I want you to understand. Children just came to a martial arts school and took a class. A child may think they're in karate now. They may think they're in martial arts. We're just telling them, if you liked it, you want to come back, Make sure you tell mom and dad you want to sign up, okay? So that's another little detail. Now, while they're in that huddle, I am going to go over to the parents and I'm going to get, this is number two, get two affirmations from the parents. Two affirmations is just two questions that are yes answers. So I'll walk over to the parents while they're in that huddle and I'm going to say, so parents, what do you think? Do you think they had fun today in the class? Do you think they got some value out of today's class on focus? Maybe those are my two questions. It does not matter. I just need them shaking their head yes. I need them getting the, to yes, okay? That's, that's that. Number next, okay? I know Mr. Nebkin's on here. That's a Mr. C thing. Number next, the close. So pay attention. This is your close, everybody. Again, I wanna thank all of you so much for, for coming out today on this Saturday. You know, we, we really love doing this with, with the community and with the kids. And again, I know a lot of you were asking, how can I get my child enrolled? I just want to let everybody know that normally, if you were to come in on any day and on a regular day and you wanted to get your child signed up in our basic trial program, it would be $199 down and 12 payments of $169. Now, that's what we charge. That may not be what you charge. But what you're doing is you're going to tell them. Normally, if you were to come in and you want to get your child enrolled in our basic trial program, it's blank. In our case, $199 down, 12 payments of $169. However, because you came to our free community event today, and there are a group of you, and there was a number of you that had inquired about enrolling your child, here's what we decided to do for everybody today. If you are interested in enrolling your child today only, you can enroll for just $50. So write this down because this will never change. Okay, write this down. You can use this for the next 20 years. It's just $50. That includes the down payment. That includes your first month. 
That includes as many family members that want to enroll. So for example, if mom and dad are here and we have, and you have two children in the class today and all four of you want to enroll, we have a great adult class. Today, you just saw a kid's class, but we do have great adult classes. All four of you can enroll today for just that one payment of $50. And it also includes uniforms for everyone in the family. Now, if you're a jujitsu school, it may include t-shirts for everyone in the family. And instead of 12 payments of 169, it's just 11 payments of 169. And by the way, we have a great family plan. Now this may not be the same for all of you. We have a great family plan. Once you pay for two people at regular price, all additional family members are free in our basic trial program. Does anybody have any questions? And I'm not asking you guys, that is what I asked the group, if I'm confident in answering the, the questions. Now, if you go watch the video that I did, okay, live, a parent raises their hand and said, well, you said 12 payments. Does that mean I have to sign a contract? Does that mean you will see how I answer that question and overcome that objection when I still got 13 of 18 people to enroll at that mass enrollment, the one that is filmed. You can hear it, okay? If you are nervous about that, you will not say, does anyone have any questions? You will say, so if anybody would like to get started, please come see one of us in the red tops or in the in polos or whatever you guys wear, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have and get you enrolled. Now, side note, as I'm saying this, as I'm saying the pricing, that instructor that has those kids in a huddle, as soon as I start talking about pricing, that instructor is standing the kids up, giving them a paper plate, and putting a piece of pizza on their plate, okay? And then as I finish, I'm gonna tell the parents, I wanna thank you again. And parents, by the way, we have enough pizza for everybody. So please make sure you get a slice of pizza and, and uh, help us because we don't wanna have all this pizza left over. I thank you so much. Give your kids a big round of applause once again. Great job, everybody. And they clap and they clap, okay? Now that was a lot on the close. Is there, is there any questions on that? And then we'll talk, well, the approach is when, when you do that, here's what you'll see. Parents kind of just standing there. And what I've seen when I've worked at schools or went to view schools do this, the instructors and the staff will just stand there and wait for people to come up to them. You cannot do that. When you dismiss, you need to walk up, you and your team need to walk up or your helpers did you have any questions? Did you want to get your free uniforms today and take advantage of the special? And then if they say no, they, nobody ever just says no. I mean, they could, but we always say, oh, really? Why? Is, it, is this not something you think you'd be interested in? We will try to find out the why. Now, I have agreements highlighted, class schedules highlighted, and I have clipboards. So if they say, yeah, you know, this sounds really good. Do me a favor. Just fill out this highlighted area. Let me, get, let me get your child fitted in the uniform. So as soon as they say yes, before I do anything else, I'm quickly handing them the clipboard, start filling out, and I'm getting that uniform on the child. Because honestly, when you get the uniform on the child, a parent doesn't want to take the uniform off the child and change their mind, okay? So let's just pause there. Any questions from anybody? Oh, somebody asked. Was Nebkin. it Mr. Nebkin? Let me, let me just yeah, see. He asked about a startup package. Yeah, so Mr. Nebkin, that's a little bit more advanced that I don't want to go over in the group. But yes, we, we give the uniform. But if you have a startup package, we will supply the package for one. It includes one package. The rest of the family members would have to buy the package. But I don't want to confuse anybody on here. Right now, the mass enrollment is about quantity of getting active students in your school, okay? As you see, it is discounted. I don't go over option A, B, C, D. We don't have time for all that. It's option D, it's $50 down 12 payments or 11 payments of blank because that 50 includes the first month. I will say on all the agreements though, it says save an additional X percent and make one payment of blank. And I highlight it. So when I hand them that, a lot of people say, and what's this? Well, if you wanna just pay one payment, you can do that. You're saving an additional 20% on, 
on what's already discounted. And, and then you, you do that. Uh, yes, I do paper agreements. I will tell you, we did an app thing, hated it. I mean, you could do it. We have the ability to do it. You could do it, but you just cannot lose the personal touch. We crashed and burned when we tried apps. My guys did an, another mass intro an hour later on a Saturday and, and they literally stopped and they got the paper out and they did the paper. I mean, that's just, we're, we're a little old school like that. I like the paper. I like parents filling it out with a pen. I like engaging with the customer, talking. I don't like just sign up on the app, guys, if you're interested. You know, it could create laziness. And, and, and if, you're, if it doesn't and you're good with the app, go ahead. But I like paper. Pizza then what? uniform, correct? Well, you get the pizza on the plates. You get the pizza on the plates while I'm still doing the clothes. Why is that? Pizza keeps people in the building. That's why you have pizza. If you don't have pizza, parents are going to say, okay, guys, get your shoes, get your stuff. Come on, let's go. And they're going to be walking out because we don't like taking more than 25 in one mass intro. That is why we will have back-to-back -back mass intros. We'll have back-to-back -back intros every hour and a half on a Saturday because I only, I like to cap it at 25 people. But when you are trying to get to 25 people, if you don't have something to slow them down from walking out, you might talk to three as everyone's walking out. So the pizza keeps people in the building. That's why we have pizza. So they have their pizza and then we're trying to get the uniforms on them once the parents say, yep, how do we sign up? Does this still work from month to month? It does, it absolutely does work for month to month. If you're doing a month to month, your enrollment should be super easy. You guys should be at like 95 to 100% if you're doing month to month. However, here's the controversy. You guys are just leaving a lot of money on the table. You don't realize the attrition rates. Everybody thinks, oh, it's about customer service, but it's about customer service, even with a program, a 12 month program, that's all equal. You're just leaving money on the table. And I know there's people out there, consultants and everyone else that would argue with me. And I would be cocky to say they would lose that argument if we really went out in front and looked at the numbers and the stats. Why? Because I did month to month. I consulted people that did month to month. And I've, and I've done terms. I've done six month terms. I've done 12 month terms. I've done three month terms. We have this down to a science, everybody. I, I just can't stress it enough. It's not because I'm smarter than anyone on here. It's just because I made more mistakes than anyone on here. By the way, just for clarity and for credibility, I, I didn't just do month to month. I did $4 a class at one time. When I opened my school, it was $4 a class, pay per class. I mean, so I did it all and we have a formula. Okay. So Mets, maybe that's next month's webinar, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, we won't go there right now. All right. Do you, so we've got about 12 minutes left. I want to get to the last couple of questions and we still have part four. So do you split up by age or all in one class? Uh, no, I like to try to keep it to age. However, age for us for like right now, because it's back to school is K through five. But you will find that the older they get closer to fifth grade, the smaller the percentages of those older kids. It's going to be like four, four K through three really is going to be the bulk of your kids and they are in the same class. Um, yeah. So by the way, one, one thing, Chris, I, I want to make sure when you enroll people that day, it's crazy. And we got to turn and burn. We don't have time. The one thing you must tell these people, and we're going to show you in the next slide is by the way, Mrs. Johnson, I will be getting in touch with you on Monday to set up a one-on-one -on -one time to go over the specifics of what you would like to see your child get out of our program, tell you more about all the stuff that we offer. So just be looking for my call on Monday to set up that one-on-one -on -one meeting so we can have a one-on-one -on -one time to find out specifically how we're gonna help your child. That will help you prevent buyer's remorse over the weekend when parents were in your school for one hour and they just signed a 12 month commitment and they're thinking, oh my God, what did we just do? And it's because we created such a great experience and emotion they reacted on that emotion. But when you tell them that, they do feel a lot more comfortable. All right. Let's go ahead and go to part number four. And we should have a few minutes to wrap up these last questions because this, this is really important, guys. 
There are four steps to this, not just three. So this last section is going to be all about the follow-up. You've heard it. Fortune is in the follow-up, okay? And there are going to be three different ways um, or three different types of follow-up that we are going to need to do. We're going to need to do some follow-up for those that enrolled. We're going to need to do some follow-up for those that showed but did not enroll. And then we're going to need to do some follow-up for those that did not show. Okay, so there's going to be the three different types of follow-up that we need to get in there. So, Mets, if they enroll, what do we got to do? Okay, first of all, let me just answer this question. Yes, we like to complete the paperwork and run the payment. If you're a one-man or one-woman show and you got 20 people there, run the credit card for the $50 and tell them we'll get all the paperwork settled when they come in next week if you just don't have time. But that's why it's on clipboards. Have them at least fill out the highlighted areas. We'll fill out the rest on payment info when we do the one-on-one, -on -one, but at least run the $50. Okay. Now, follow-up. Everybody that enrolled, you set the appointment. Okay. You cover what she's putting there as like a new student checklist. What does your school offer? You know, Mrs. Johnson, we're more than just kicking and punching. We do parent night outs. We have an unbelievable referral program that we do. We, we uh, want to check kids' report cards, whatever. Also, did you notice the savings? Did you have any interest in saving an additional 20%? You could pay up front and save a total of blank dollars. That's the paid in full. But you got to find out what it is that that parent wants. What do they want to see their kid get out of this? Focus, confidence, discipline, respect, exercise. Write it down and, and make sure you deliver. Deliver what your customer wants. So that's the one-on-one -on -one appointment. You got to do that or you're going to have a high attrition rate from your mass interest. The next. The people who showed but did not enroll, pay attention, everybody. Do not panic at a mass intro and start offering a trial program. Because if you offer a trial program at a mass intro because you're scared to go for the enrollment, you now have nothing to fall back on for the people who didn't do it. But when you go for the enrollment, we call them on Monday. You got to call them on Monday. You, you cannot wait a week, by the way. You got to call them soon. So Monday, Tuesday at the latest. You call them up and say, hey, the reason I'm calling, I just wanted to know how did Johnny like the class, that he had a good time, the white breaking his board. Look, I know it was a little crazy. I know that I didn't have enough time to really talk to everybody. And I know you didn't take advantage of the special, but what I'd love to do is I'd really love to show you the values and benefits of our program. I'd love to know if you wanted to come in. We have a great special, four weeks for $49. It includes the uniform. It'll give you an opportunity to... Uh, to see the values and benefits of our program without making that commitment, see if this is something Johnny would enjoy. You can do that, or you can invite them to try a class. Look, I'd love you to see the values and benefits of our class without the hecticness of our community event. And by the way, because it was so crazy that day, if you decide that you want to take advantage or get your child enrolled after the class, I'll go ahead and extend the special from Saturday just because it was so crazy. You could do either or. OK, on the on the people that showed up but did not enroll. But you take the responsibility. It was a little crazy. I didn't get enough time to talk to everybody. And then people who signed up to come to your event or said they would come to your event. And by the way, how do I know this? Because this is not something to just market in social media. That'll work in the beginning sometimes. But usually we get our mass intro people from running a booth, doing a, a four week course having people, getting in front of people and signing them up for this, calling them the night before to confirm that they're going to make it because we're going to order pizza. We want to know how many people will be attending. So we have their contact info. But the people who didn't show, we're calling them up and saying, hey, Mrs. Johnson, this is Mr. Metzger from Championship Martial Arts. Hey, the reason I'm calling is I, I know that you uh, had signed up Billy to come to our free community event on Saturday and we missed you. It was an unbelievable class. The kids were really excited. We set goals for the new school year. They got to break a board. And for whatever, you know, I know maybe things got a little hectic. I'd love to still give him the opportunity to set some goals, get to break a board, which is really about boosting confidence. I have a time tonight at this time or, or tomorrow at this time. Do you have 20 minutes? Now, it's not a whole mass intro. Now I'm setting up a trial lesson to come in and let him break the board. By the way, you get to hold the board for him. Would you be able to come in tonight at 5.30 or is 6.15 better for you? And I'm going to try to get them in. 
And when we do that, I will extend my mass intro special to them. And if they don't take that, I will get them on a trial. I will get a financial commitment before they walk out of my school. There it is. Any questions? Mic drop. Mic drop. One question from Ms. Whitman. Have you found a prime time to call these parents? I struggle with getting them on the line because they're at work picking up dinner uh, or picking up the kids or making dinner, et cetera. Yes. Every, every time until we get them. The prime time is when you get them. So here's the secret. We will call them when we get into the school. We will not leave a message. We will call them a few hours later. We will not leave a message. We will call them a third time a little later in the evening, and we will leave a message. But when we leave a message, here's a little golden nugget for you guys, because the reason why people don't follow up is because they get uncomfortable with follow up. So when we leave a message, we will say, hey, Mrs. Johnson, it's Mr. Metzger calling from Championship Martial Arts. The reason I'm calling, we always start with the reason, is I wanted to see how Johnny liked the class the other day, you know, if he had a good time. And I just want to tell you about some exciting stuff. Now, it depends. Did, or did they enroll, not enroll? What's the deal there? But I'll call them up and I'll say, look, if I don't hear from you, as a courtesy, I will give you a call back tomorrow uh, if I don't hear from you first. I look forward to talking with you. Now, when you say that, when you don't get a call back, you don't feel uncomfortable calling them back because you left that message saying, as a courtesy, I'm going to call you back if I don't hear from you first. So. That's just something to say to make yourself more comfortable to follow up. And when the parent or the, the, the customer hears that, they're like, oh, they're going to call back. Let me call. Let me just call them. I mean, you just have a better chance of getting them to call you. Okay. And by the way, for all of you, at one o'clock in four minutes, we're going to be doing the Mets Tassel show. If you guys want to jump on Facebook to watch that, that's also a free show. But we're going to be talking about another topic. But I'm just letting you know. That's why I'm, I'm rushing a little bit. Would you break a board as a one-off in a trial, even if you're a BJJ school? Yeah, and by the way, why not break a board every time you test in BJJ? Like Chris said, is striking not important? I mean, even in BJJ, I would think you would want to learn how to throw a knee or an elbow or something, right? And, and you don't have to do that. But here's my credibility check again. If anyone follows MMA or knows who Greg Jackson is or Matt Lindland, who was a Greco-Roman Olympic wrestler, UFC fighter. Greg Jackson trains John Jones, trained George St. Pierre. I even got them doing board breaking because I walked in. He's like, we don't do board breaking. We don't do, I go, what are these over here? He goes, I was being funny. I go, what are these? He goes, oh, those are Muay Thai pads. I go, what do you do with Muay Thai pads? He goes, what do you mean? I go, what do you do with those? Well, that's where the kids practice their knees. So you guys hit these like soft pads. You can't hit a board like a real man would hit a board or a real martial artist. You got to hit soft. He goes, good point. I said, let the kids just break a board. It's just fun for them. If you're hitting a pad, let them break a board to create confidence. And, and it's just, it has nothing to do with karate, guys, the board. It really doesn't. It's just about creating an emotion with kids. And by the way, everyone on here, whether you want to admit it or not, you guys like breaking stuff too. We like breaking stuff. I mean, how many of you tried breaking bricks and stuff, you know, in your garage when you were younger? I mean, we all tried breaking stuff. We're a Baseball BJJ back. school and we do the board breaking as well. So hundred percent guys, if you're BJJ schools, go ahead and do it. Uh, what'd you guys think? You know, typically uh, as an internet marketer, we're taught when you do webinars, you tell people what to do and why to do it, but you're not supposed to tell them how. And I didn't want to do that this go around. And if you've ever been on webinars with Mr. Metzger and myself, we really deliver on the how. So I hope you guys feel much more confident going into the back to school season. You have the framework with exactly how to run these community events, no matter what the theme was. And if you need help with your online marketing, would be happy to help you at Grow Pro. And we do have a live event in October. Uh, Maya is putting it on in Orlando called the Game Changers. So if you'd like more Chris, if you'd like more Mets, if you'd like to see all of our amazing consultants, we'd uh, we'd love to see you guys hey, there. Chris, Chris, let me yes. just say something. Hey, I know a lot of you asked about our big event coming up in October. <laughs> I want to let you know that if you register now, I'm kidding. 
So if you guys are interested, we'd love to see in October, but what's free and what's starting right now on the Maya group, in the Maya group and everywhere else is the Mets Tassel show on how to find great staff or great team members. So if you want to check that out, it's a free show. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. We'll get this replay out uh, later on today. Mets, have a great Facebook Live. Thanks. See Chris, you guys. Great job. Great job. Love the drawings. Bye, guys. Awesome. Bye, guys.